So the satin on top now, um, it's going to be, as we said, at a similar angle to the leaf above, so that the two are flowing together, and in contrast angle to the blue padding. I'm going to start with my first stitch emerging here and coming across the shape like so, that nice, good 45 degree angle. And as we did before, I'm going to lock that in position by working a stab stitch into the padding to keep that steady. Now I chose to work it there, A, because it's the fattest part of the shape, but also because if I begin by trying to come up here in that groove between my new shape and the previous shape, that's very, very tight to bring the needle up there. So it makes sense to do my first stitch just a little down from the previous leaf so that it's comfortable to come up at that point um, in free fabric. We're now going to work to the base tip of the leaf as we did on the previous one by coming up on the top edge and pushing down and into the previous stitch on the bottom edge. We're going to look at the rounded top in a moment. So coming up leaving a little bit of a gap and pushing in on that bottom edge. Now this leaf is turning very, very little at all. So we don't need to leave too much space as we come up. And that's where you get practiced at, at knowing how much to judge. Depending whether the leaf is turning, whether your angle is flattening, you're the one in control of that. Again, if our angle was getting too flat, we can always put a wedge stitch in. So we come up and we tuck the needle down into the padding, sliding smoothly across the shape towards and under the previous stitch. Remember your rules that as you come up, the little bit of breathing space, straight to the sky with the needle, and then as you're going down, parallel to the split stitch edge, and pushing the needle 45 degrees to the fabric and towards and under the previous stitch. And we're going to try and maintain that nice long angle all the way down to the base point of the shape. It's a much more squat little shape this one compared to the previous one. But we can still get that nice angle to it. I'm going to tuck in a little wedge there I think just to make my angle a little bit steeper. It's just starting to flatten a little bit. down to our point. Now because this shape is quite short I'm quite happy to jump up the back and come up at the top here and we remember that at the top we work in the opposite direction so we're now going to come up here which is nice because we're in nice free fabric here we're not battling with coming up next to that previous leaf. So we're coming up, little bit of breathing space again, and tucking back into the acute angle. And really nice and easy to slide the needle down now, carving its way into that groove between the new split stitch and the existing satin leaf. 
So coming up, leaving a little bit of breathing space and pushing in. Now we're about to hit a rounded leaf. At the end of a rounded leaf, as opposed to the pointed leaf we did before, the method is very slightly different. If we continue to leave a gap as we come up there, these stitches are going to fall off the end and give us a very square-ended shape. Instead what we do is we bring the needle back so that it's emerging from beneath the previous stitch, tight under it, and flowing out around the shape so it again is parallel to the split stitch and about 45 degrees as it rises up from the fabric but it's tucked right back under that previous stitch so there is no gap anymore and it's curving its way out and around that rounded end it goes in just as before pushing parallel to the split stitch and around the rounded tip And the needle, as is, it's emerging from the fabric, is actually exactly the same angle as it descends. Um, the whole idea is that this end is tucked back and under so that it looks like it's curving out and around. And then doing the same thing as it goes down. Getting a little bit tough there, particularly with linen it can get a little bit tough as shapes are coming close together. So emerging out at that angle and it's as if you're drawing a circle with your needle. So the needle's coming out at this angle, curving round, curving round and then tucking back in again. And it's really good to get this idea into your head that you're not just binding over padding with thread to create a satin effect but instead that you're drawing and sculpting with your needle all the time so think of that needle as drawing out and then drawing back in again to create that rounded tip. <laughs> 